What's up guys, welcome to the 30 day 30 tutorial teach to learn challenge where I learn something new every day, create something sexy and make a video tutorial on it. So let's go check out what I created today. If you guys take this another step further and create like a two minute video, I guarantee you it's gonna get a couple hundred thousand views. Like a video on like the American national parks or like big cities around the world, you're gonna hit like a million views. And all I ask from you is to let me know that I helped you. Publicly or privately, it doesn't matter. But I want the satisfaction of knowing that I helped somebody like you. All right. For those of you who don't know what Google Earth Studio is, it's a browser-based software that has the same exact data set as Google Earth Pro, but it's used and created just for animation. So you can create stunning, stunning visuals beyond the ones I just showed you. Take a look at Google Earth Studio's animation reel. So let's go ahead and dive deeper into how to create these visuals. Now, if you want to create some standard visuals, maybe for something educational or something basic, I have an intro and user interface tutorial that I created two days ago. Go check that out before continuing with this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on creating some of these crazy aerials. Here's a look at what my user interface looks like when I created the previous clip. What this tutorial is gonna do is it's gonna save you some time, but still gonna take a lot of familiarizing and trial and error on your part. So I'm gonna talk conceptually first before I get into some of the shortcuts. So my first advice is to really just experiment and see what kind of aerials you want and then plan ahead and work things out correctly as you go. Because what you see here on the user interface is that there's gonna be a lot of keyframes. Each category is gonna have a couple of keyframes. And when you adjust one keyframe, that's gonna readjust your flight pattern or your perspective for the entirety of this time here. So changing a keyframe really has a domino effect. And on top of that, when you change a keyframe for let's say altitude, then you have to change your keyframe for tilt because your view is going to be different. And when you change the keyframe for tilt, then you have to change the other keyframes. To prevent a consistent domino effect of tweaking, it's pretty important to work things out correctly as you go, which means you have to plan ahead, which means you got to experiment first to really get a good idea of where you want to be at. Some basic advice to help you really get started is to use less keyframes. The less keyframes you use, the smoother the motion and the less shaky and jerky it's gonna be. To get to where I'm at right now, right click and click show value graph. And that gives you more customization when it comes to editing your keyframes. If you're just here, you can only do basic things like right click and clicking ease in and ease out. Ease out creates acceleration from a keyframe and ease in creates deacceleration to a keyframe. So the first keyframe is gonna have ease out and the second keyframe is gonna have ease in. Auto ease adds both ease in and ease out. All right, let's go back to value graph. Smooth curves equals smooth motion. Two useful shortcuts are J and K. J is to go to the previous keyframe and K is to go to the next keyframe. Other shortcuts include click and drag to pan, scroll to zoom in and out, hold alt and drag or hold and use any of the arrow keys to adjust your tilt. Hold control and drag your mouse to change your perspective without moving the position of the camera. The camera position, longitude, latitude, altitude is basically the XYZ axis. Pan is basically left and right and tilts up and down. I can't give you a specific definitive guide on what exact keyframes to put in, but I could show you some of my workflow right here. And maybe that'll give you a better understanding on how to work fast and effective with this. But again, it's a lot of trial and error and familiarizing yourself with all the different adjustments. All right, so here I'm at the value graph for altitude. And what I wanna do is I wanna adjust both the descent and also the sudden pickup of altitude. So I'm gonna adjust a little antenna here and that's gonna make my altitude pick up faster. And then I wanna make the descent a little bit flatter. 
So you could drag these little antenna things and the longer your antenna is, the more it affects the graph. When you adjust the altitude, you also have to adjust the tilt. And this is when I realized that the less keyframes you have, the smoother your motion is. It's easier to adjust the little antenna things. So I deleted the keyframe here, and I could also probably delete the second keyframe. And my task game dies at the very, very end. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. It's basically just a lot of tweaking, like a lot of clicking. I felt like my hand had carpal tunnel after like two to three hours of like tweaking around. But you'll get the hang of it and you're gonna go ahead and create some awesome videos and do really freaking well. And just remember that I hope you guys start out. So see you guys tomorrow for another tutorial.